today, well, we've got one of these Harvard 020 200 milliwatt two channel walkie talkies from 1981, which are little more than a toy, but they do have their usefulness. You know, you could be putting up an aerial, you want something small and handy, and they do work. We did some range tests in 83 and we got uh, about a mile on uh, one of these and the ones with the similar chassis because you've got the Harrier WT1 with the same chassis, you've got the Banatone um, Ranger 2 and you've got the Alba CBH1. And it'll be from the service manual for the Alba CBH1 which we've got the proper full service manual here which we'll be working from. So uh, I'm glad I bought that at the time. So it's a single conversion receiver with an IF of 455 kHz, crystal controls, you've got four crystals there. This is already labelled, it's been tested by another engineer and it's faulty so it's got a red label on it. And the reason it's already in bits is because all these parts have been through the company dishwasher because it was in an unhygienic state. The push to talk bar has got one of its little pegs missing so not as good as what we would have liked because it's, it's supposed to have another one on, on this side but I'm sure it'll work okay if we're careful with it so what we're going to do is hook it up to test equipment and that's a, such a pain on these kind of equipments because there's no sockets so all the test equipment has to be unsoldered in leads um, we also need 9 volts at 40 to 50 milliamps so I'm going to pause the video and we'll connect up some things to it Okay, well we've set the test equipment up. You'll probably appreciate these kind of radios are absolutely cost prohibitive to do. I would say these cost twice as much to service as a normal mobile set, which would bring them above the price they were originally by quite a long way. So we're only doing this exercise for um, education. I've made myself a chart up here of what needs adjusting. and there isn't a trimmer for each of the crystals but there's definitely a transmit overall adjustment so if they've drifted together then we've got a fighting chance but if the channels have drifted individually it'll be a compromise I think there could be an adjustment on receive but I haven't proved it yet now what you have to do is to connect the uh, your test equipment to the input side of the loading coil. Transformer 1 is a loading coil and we'll of course be adjusting that when we come to put the telescopic antenna it all back in the case and we will set that up. But you have to go the input side of that otherwise you'd be doing it through the loading coil and yes to be I would be totally wrong. Now then, I'm going to transmit the whole thing is fiddly. These have got a little battery test thing. We're providing 9 volts from the bench power supply. That does light up. Incidentally, when the battery voltage drops to 7, says the service manual, then that light would go out. So that's the criteria of that test. So transformer 2 is the first port of call for transmit, it says. I don't ever recall doing one of these before. Now, right at the moment, we are getting what and it's drifting down um, it's doing 40 milliwatts it's supposed to do 200 milliwatts followed by transformer 4 oh we've got wax in these Mind you, I say this is doing 50 milliwatts, but those uh, realistic 50 milliwatt handhelds have got excellent range. And that's no, no improvement whatsoever. So we'll move to the next one, which is T3. I'm 
going to try and pull it on frequency next, which is uh, Transformer 6. Transformer 6. It should be that one there. No, it shouldn't. It's the one with the wax on just there. I've uploaded this album manual to scribed sites so people can download it. Because I bet there aren't many people other than me who've got a copy. Right, so we're on channel 30 with this. So it should be 27891258 88826. So it's actually out of acceptable limits. And it is pulling up. 8889. It's getting there. Well, I go to the foot of our stairs. We don't have any. There we are, 2789125. Out of interest, I'll just change the channel. And just see where that is. It should be 2774125 on channel 14. 27731675. That is... What I can do is just pull that up slightly, which I've now done. So that's now within acceptable tolerance of frequency error. And back to channel 30 is now 2789148, and that's well within acceptable frequency error. So I've been able to do a compromise, so both channels are on frequency within the limits. So that's very good. Now, once again, I'm going to go through this because I don't know why, but I didn't seem to get um, very far with the first adjustment. So we'll just uh, do that again. At least this hasn't been fiddled with. These retailed at £24.95 at the time. Pause the video, I'll see what's not happening there. We've missed out um, T3, that's what the pro problem probably is. We're still on 50 milliwatts. I'll just go back to these. Okay, reading it off the power meter, we are doing 50 milliwatts. So although it's been tuned up, there's been no improvement over that 50 milliwatts. So it's supposed to do 200 milliwatts, but of course this power meter is a commercial one, and you know I'm happy that uh, it, it is transmitting at, uh, at a usable power. So. That sorted that out, so presumably the reason our engineer couldn't get it to work is because it was so off frequency, nothing was going to happen. Now for deviation, that's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? But I'm not going to have to whistle into the speaker, which doubles as a mic, because it's got a tone oscillator, it's got a call tone oscillator. So if we press transmit and battery test at the same time, it generates one kilohertz tone. So there we are. Now, the deviation control is variable resistor 2, and it's just there. So we'll just see where that is. Now I'm going to have to tune up the test set because normally we do these on channel 20, not channel 30. So we'll just do that right now. So we're into um, FM modulation. And I just need to adjust this. And then press the little button hopefully at the same time is that 
actually over the top. Now I was looking at the wrong scale. It's 1.9 as it's come. I've got the um, test set set to 2.5, uh, sorry, it's to 0 0.5 deviation um, while I just tuned that. And I've just flipped it back to a full scale deflection of 5. That's why I said what I said then. So we'll just try and adjust that at the same time. But I think you can see how fiddly these are. Just give it the quick whistle test. <whistles> Wallow. I don't, can't say I got anything much out of that on the uh, meter. I've just uh, used service oil switch cleaner on the um, preset there on variable resistor two, and that's uh, brought the uh, deviation up to two point one kilohertz which is within spec but a little tiny bit quieter than what we would have liked so that's done all the transmit things there are to do on this it's brought it onto frequency it's done the deviation and the only thing which is going to be left and that'll be you can hear that aircraft overhead we're 16 miles from RAF Waddington and there's a um, air show tomorrow so there's uh, quite a bit of aircraft noise as they're coming in uh, for that so I might be in the middle of nowhere, but I'm actually in between three airfields. There's one two miles away, there's one four and a half miles away, there's Waddington 16 miles away, and there's an army base seven miles away. So I'm obviously number one nuclear target. That covers the transmit side of the Harvard 020. We'll see whether we can get something out of the receiver in the next video.